Council meeting, New Carlisle, Ohio, March 19th at 6.30 p.m. Mrs. Byrne. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lighting. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Pop. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. All present. All right. So I will do the invocation tonight. If you don't mind standing up and bowing your heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for us to be able to meet here in this society and now we'll discuss the issues that face our great city, Father God. Lord, continue to protect our first responders as they go out and do their duties tonight. And Lord, bless our city administration. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we use the flag up here? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, On the nets. So Second. Second. Take a break. Okay. Mirror cook. <laughs> Mr. Shammy. Here. Yes. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Cobb. Yeah. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Here. I mean, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Seven to zero. All right. Communications. There are none tonight. Manager report. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, and members of the public. I'd like to share with the city manager report. <laughs> um, again, I, I kept this on here. Online utility payment. Online utility payments are up and going. Um, be aware of third-party vendors. And again, pay through www.newcarlisle.net. If you do not pay through our website, you will be using a third party vendor and it may delay your check being here on time. So again, please pay your utility bill online through the city's website at www.newcarlisle.net. Planning board uh, meeting has been scheduled for April 26th. Um, it's either gonna be at the fire station or here at the shelter house. It will begin at 6.30 p.m. Historically, our planning board meetings do start at 3.30. But given the nature of what this meeting is for, which is for Twin Creeks Covenants and also some Madison Street School discussion, um, we have decided to have it in the evening to allow people from Twin Creeks to attend who may work during the day otherwise. Um, that is, meeting is open to the public and we will put on Facebook where that will be at. And that's regarding the fire station or the shelter house. <clears throat> Town hall speaking point. At the last town hall meeting, I had <coughs> mentioned something about the income tax collections, and I misspoke. So I actually wrote a memorandum to council correcting that, and I would like to take a few minutes, if it's okay, to read this memo that I put out to council last week. So at the most recent town hall meeting, dated 3518, I discussed many positive accomplishments of 2017. During the same meeting, I also discussed the amount of income tax revenue the city received in 2017 under the first year of the contract with CCA for the city's collection. I stated that the city collected roughly $112,000 less than 2016. This figure was incorrect. The correct, around, the correct amount is roughly $204,000 and that does include, include the fees from CCA of $57,840. This was an honest mistake as I was only figuring in the amount that is receded to the general fund and I was not taking into account the income tax revenue that is receded into the police levy fund. Prior to writing this memo, both the mayor and vice mayor had been made aware of this miscommun miscommunication that I will be addressing at tonight's council meeting. These past few days, I've been challenging myself to coming up with a sound monetary amount that our city lost compared to 2016 collections. This was proving to be very difficult and nearly impossible for the following reasons. One, the city is not able to say that CCA was solely responsible for this reduction. Many factors come into play with how much income tax revenue in a given year is collected. 
Some of these factors can be loss and or gains in citizen income, number of filers in a given year, and et cetera. Point two, we need more history. 2016 could have been, been that banner outlier year that saw a massive spike in collections. We need to see, we need more history than over a little over two years to see where these collections will level off. The city does not have much history with the 1.5% income tax rate. We only have history with the 1% income tax rate. And three, we need to analyze this outcome in a different light. Yes, it is true that we did collect less in 2017 than in 2016. But if the city did not outsource our income tax collections, the hiring of additional staff would have been required. I have attached an Excel sheet that we've been using to track these figures. We do know the city saved approximately 98,500 on personnel and operational costs. This figure is der derived from subtracting the cost of additional staff and from the materials needed to continue collections in-house. <coughs> Minus the cheap fees from CCA. Sorry, I lost my spot. Please refer to the Excel sheet for more detailed information, and that was directed to council to look at that. I said simply subtracting the differences in the amount in, that we collected in years 2016 and 2017 is not the correct way to analyze the loss in collections. When more history is accumulated, there will be a better understanding of how much income tax will be collected in a given year. And it says, I have placed hard copies of this memo and Excel sheet into your mailboxes at the city building. That's all I had to say, but I will apologize from the bottom of my heart with what I communicated at the last town hall meeting. It was a simple, honest mistake. Once I realized um, my error, I had um, drafted a response up to the mayor and vice mayor and informed them that I would be discussing it again to clarify that. So if anyone has any questions about that particularly, should I take them now or just hold on? Council, any questions? Yeah, I think you're going to Bridge. Okay, thank you. All right, and moving on to the city manager report. We have a new employee in our water department. His name is Mr. Paul Sauter. He is an uh, operator. He just started on, this is his second week, beginning of the second week. Yep. If you see Paul, say hi to him. He's a fantastically awesome guy, really inquisitive, and we are very glad he is with us and being part of our water department. City Council and administration headshots, we still need to get that done, and this is for our updated website. I would also ask a short bio from each, each bio from each council member. Um, if you want some direction on what to say in that bio, please give me a call. Um, but basically, it's going to be picture and a little bit about yourself, and then we'll also do the same thing for the administration side as well. Um, we will need to schedule that soon, so I'll be emailing council members regarding that. Bloom Blitz grant application, I'm happy to say that the city did apply again this year for a grant that will reimburse us up to $250,000 for the planting of flowers. In the years past, we have got this grant and we have used them around the cemetery ground sign in the city building. This year, if awarded, which we'll find out I think in about three, four weeks, we would like to continue on um, with the areas we went in the past and also in our parks. So um, I will keep everyone posted as the outcome of that grant. Um, that is all I have for the city manager's report. Um, but what we'll do is it seems as though I have just skipped around a bunch. So we're going to start back up top with, Ms. Harris. with our finance discussion. <laughs> no clue why I did that. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, and members of the public tonight. I'm going to share our February finance report. The total revenue that we took into the month of February was $334,078.31. Total expenditures for the month of February is $267,094.59. For the year-to-date collection of revenue, $668,965.64. And our year-to-date total expenditures is $683,609.92. Uh, we still separate out the general fund. The general fund's revenue for February was $107,835.59. And the expenditures in the general fund for February is $66,208.88. And I have one more note again about if anybody would need some help with filing the new Carlisle City Income Tax, they can first contact CCA 
1-800-223-6317. We have um, samples for filling out the forms located in the city uh, administrative office. And you can always contact our office at 845-9492 and set an appointment with our tax administrator. She's at extension 15. Entertain any questions? Council, any questions tonight? Yeah, I think we're good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. 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 Thank
The only time you can see that new curl out is when you're right up around score further. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kicker. You're welcome. Move on with the city manager's report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kiko. Our finite fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Cook. Mayor, Councilman, Public. Um, in the month of February, the Nicola Fire Division responded to 83 EMS calls in the city. Four in Elizabeth Township. The, the, the division responded to eight fire related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered mutually by either Pike Township or Beth Clark uh, due to Medic 52 already being on a response. We answered one mutual aid call to Pike and Township and two to Bethel Clark. In the month of February, the division responded to two overdose calls. In February of 2017, we responded to 11 overdose calls and two of those were DOAs. So they are going down. Um, this Saturday, the 24th, we will be having our next open house from uh, two o'clock to five o'clock to discuss anything about the levy. Uh, we have received our issue number. The issue number for the levy will be issue four. Uh, and from the division uh, as a whole, we're asking that everyone would keep Christian, Christiansburg Fire Service in your thoughts this week. Uh, they lost a longtime member, 50 year member, uh, due to an auto accident on Friday evening or Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Council? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chief Trustee. Moving on with our uh, city manager's report, our police discussion with Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, uh, audience. Thank you. For February, the New Crowd deputies were dispatched to 36 calls. That included uh, assaults. We had one, domestic violence, 11, theft, five, non injury crash, one, injury crash, one, citation, seven. Drug complaint one, overdose one, and suicide attempt three. And I just want to comment. Uh, we know there's drugs out there, and if you don't send in a complaint, we don't know a lot of times. So I'd like to see that drug complaint number really jump up there and exceed the rest of them. Uh, during the month of February, the weather was kind to us, and that kept the vehicle crashes down considerably. The crowd deputies have been out on patrol checking businesses and New Corral Elementary School along with taking calls for service. And our new bicycles came in, it's the two new bikes did come in and immediately Mr. Howie Kitko and Mr. Dave Coleman assembled them and put on the police lights front and back along with some other equipment. That was a nice savings for the city and I want to thank both of them, Mr. Kitko and Mr. Coleman, that's kind of above and beyond what they do. Uh, and they did a fine job with that. With weather becoming nicer and being on daylight saving time, more traffic and pedestrians will be out. Please slow down and pay attention to your driving. Uh, there's too many distractions. It's just not worth it. And please con contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. This could be the phone call we need, we need to solve a crime. And that concludes my report for February. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Sergeant Underwood, just a quick question. When we get back into the weather where they could be out on the bikes on patrol, how was that how was that decided as far as who goes on patrol and how many times a week and so on? It's who's available most of the time. So and if I remember right, if we have someone on a bike, there's always someone on a cruiser as well. Correct. We're never without an actual cruiser versus the bike. We should not be. Okay. I can't say it occasionally won't happen, but we try very hard for that not to happen. Thank you. Hey, Sergeant, uh, I was just wondering, what is an example of a drug complaint? Like just if you see suspicious activity? Um, suspicious activity, that's the type of thing I'd like for you to re report to our local deputies. And we know there's some problems in certain areas. Uh, it takes a while for us to get in. If, if you're seeing colors of vehicles, you can get license plate numbers, county or state stickers, um, give us some information. Now, there is, it's very quiet, or I, I want to say it's, a, it's very quiet of what our investigations unit do because it just takes one leak and it can blow a lot of investigation. And quite honestly, it takes a while. 
Um, but we know there's drugs around. There's drugs in every community. And we know people are seeing those drugs. Uh, or maybe not the drugs themselves, but they're seeing the activity. Um, we've stepped up our game a little bit. And normally, we would, would ask you to see a drug buy. It, what, did you, what did you witness? Now we're getting back to, um, well, give us the cars. If you, if you see seven, eight cars coming in out at night, two or three o'clock in the morning, um, let us know. And it, it is frustrating for a lot of people, but we still need for you to give us that information. And I, I don't know what, what else to say. It's your eyes and ears are what help us. And if you witness a crime, and if you don't let us know, it goes by. It happens every year at the festival. Uh, a couple things will happen, and I won't know about it till a week later. So let us know when it happens, and if the problem's not being taken care of, that's what I'm here for. Let me know so I can jump on top of that. Thank you. Thank you. Council? No? Thank you so much. Sergeant. Mm -hmm. Because I bounced around, I think we are totally done with the city management report, so thank you all very much. And if I could just give props to Sergeant Underwood, because I don't, the, the bikes he had got for the city are fantastically awesome. And, he, and I think what I'll do is ask for a video. I know someone sent me a video earlier, and I'd love to put that on Facebook, because there are actually two little lights on the front and <laughs> lights on the bottom, and there's also a siren. Yeah. So was it you who gave me the video? No. Oh, oh how he did. So, um, thank you for that because you found a fantastic product for the city for dirt cheap. So hats off to you for that. We, we, we got a lot there. Yeah, can we bring it in maybe at the next council meeting, you think? Oh, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, fantastic. fantastic. Great. Fantastic. That's you. all I have for the city manager for. I would happily entertain any questions or comments. Council, any questions? Comment? Mr. Lindsay? How many bicycles do we have? Did these two new ones replace the old ones, or do we have four of them now? We've got two old ones still, right? We do. They're 1990 bikes. The front ports are froze on them. They're just, they're There's shot. There's stuff on them that didn't work. <laughs> we tried to move some things, but yeah, they don't work really well. So we're going to just take those out of service or whatever and sell them or put them in the woods? Would like to, yes. Yeah. be awesome. Uh, they were $499 a piece, and that is a steal at that price. That, I was looking at local bikes for $1,200 a piece. So, well, we, <clears throat> thank you, sir, for finding the $400 bikes for us. Well, <laughs> Council, anything else? We lucked out some there, too. Yeah. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. All right. I guess it's back to us. Um, <coughs> Comments from members of the public. <coughs> Comments. You got. You have five minutes. No comments from members of the public. Committee reports none tonight. Mrs. Burner. Right. Now to our first resolution, 18-04, instruction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution <coughs> providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the general fund. To the debt service fund of the city of New Carlisle. Council? Oh, yes, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> oh, Ms. Lowry. I make a motion to adopt resolution 18 04R. Second. And an explanation of this resolution uh, this is basically a general housekeeping resolution. Anytime that we move funds from the general fund to another uh, fund, we need to have uh, council approval to do that. And this particular transfer is for our uh, debt service for general bond retirement. Council, any questions? No? Mrs. Barber. Right. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Chaney. Yes. Bob? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. 
Resolution 18-05, Introduction to Public Hearing in Action tonight. A resolution providing for the transfer of funds from the general fund to the water fund of the city of New Carlisle. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Move to accept resolution 18-05-R. Second. And an explanation of this resolution. Again, it's another housekeeping one uh, to where we're moving money out of the general fund. Um, and this one is actually going to our water fund to pay for the first year of the water tower maintenance program. Council? Ms. Bear. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shannon? <coughs> yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Passes 7 0. All right. Resolution 18 06 R, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action Tonight. A resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the general fund to the Twin Creeks Infrastructure Bonds Debt Service Fund of the City of New Carlisle. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lighty. Due to adopt resolution 18 05 R. Second. Six. Oh, R. Oh, six R. <laughs> Second. <laughs> And another explanation of this, so this is another uh, housekeeping one. We are moving funds from our general fund to our Twin Creeks Infrastructure Bond Debt Retirement Service Fund. <coughs> Council, comments, questions? Mrs. Byrne. All right. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Passes 7-0. And our last one, Ordinance 18-04, Public Hearing in Action Tonight, an ordinance amending Section 220.01 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding the City Manager's <coughs> Monetary Authority to enter into contracts. Before we move on, I need to pass my gavel over to Mr. Lindsay because this is my ordinance and I cannot uh, be the chair to introduce the ordinance. So, okay. Acting Mayor Lindsay. I move to uh, approve Ordinance 18-04. Second. I can, I can go through it. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Uh, so what this ordinance does is uh, the state allows city managers uh, or department heads to spend up to $50,000 with uh, out council approval. That's something I want to bring down to $20,000. i have been av advocating this since 2013 when I first brought it up. But I've worked with Mr. Bridge on it thoroughly on it because my first plan uh, was with Mrs. Jones and I thought it would be great to bring it down to 15, uh, 1500 like about the township. And that definitely didn't seem feasible. And then on uh, December 12th, 2014, I, I brought it up again. And this time I went to 5,000. Uh, it didn't get any traction there either. So then I brought it up one more time, uh, February of last year, to 10,000. And we had moderate support. So I bring it up again this time after working with Mr. Bridge thoroughly through it to bring up to, to lower it from 50 to 20. That allows him to make some of the bigger purchases that are on the day-to-day -day operational basis. But some of the other purchases uh, would be able to be approved. And I definitely uh, think Mr. Bridge is doing a great job. And I don't think there's any waste going on from Mr. Bridge at all. This is to prevent uh, when Mr. Bridge does move on, or if he chooses to stay with us till retirement, whichever one, whoever <laughs> precedes him, uh, I would like to make sure that we don't get into the situation that we've gotten into before with Mr. Kapling or, or uh, former city managers in the past. So I think this is a good way to have a checks and balances system and increase those checks for council. So that is why I've introduced this legislation. So. Council, any questions? Uh, I have a couple. You touched on, Mr. Reynolds, if you don't mind me asking. You yes. said the state has a, you say it one more time. A so guideline at 50000 So that's kind of like their suggestion or their... That's their max. Or like, that's the max the city can spend. Okay. With, and I agree with you. Mr. Bridge is, I mean, when he spends a nickel, he, he's coming to city council and, and letting us know, like, I know he needs a new laptop here soon if you haven't already bought it already. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he, he's always coming to... Us and letting us know what kind of money he's spending and what for. Um, with this being, with that being said, for purchases that, that are going to be over this amount, like police cruisers, uh, so you will have to go to Lynette to to clear legislation to do so. Correct. It will be a legislation piece, but what we can do um, in order to limit 
the number of legislation pieces for one particular item for like a police cruiser is something similar to how we did is the traffic signal one with the authority to sign any and all documents moving forward yeah so we can reduce how many legislation pieces we have if that an original ordinance that we do details the project the price um, and then in any kind of succeeding legislation that may come into play that would still come that would still be a part of that, whether it be for, um, give an example, say we got that police cruiser, now we need to outfit with lights. You know, we can just do it all under one instead of having all these different legislation pieces. My question is, if we have to do that, is this going to cost the city more money as far as having to get these things prepped to bring them to us every time we need to spend something like that? Honestly, I mean, it's, I think, we looked at how many times did it, we're, we three times, something. In the last three times years. or something, but you know, I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. At first, I was kind of like, okay, what's going on? But it makes sense as to why this is going on. Quite frankly, this should have been in place back in 2015, right before I took over, when the city had no money in the bank, to be honest with you. Um, will it cause more legislation pieces? I'm sure it will a few times, you know? Um, but at the same time of that, this is checks and balances that do need to be put in place, to be quite honest with you. Um, I wanted it to be known that this administration is not overspending, and I think that's been cleared. Mm -hmm. um, you can really have a long discussion about what's right and what's not right with this particular legislation piece, and those are all subjective opinions. At the end of the day, you have a council and if they want to put this in place, but I will kindly say that our limitation is already in the budget and in our capital. We get the capital approved, it says we're gonna buy X amount of capital purchases this year. So we're, we're, we got the checks and balances there, then we also have the checks and balances for overall budget. You know, this is a standard practice that a lot of townships and municipalities do, so I understand the need. I just wanted a disclaimer that we do a very good job of this. <coughs> And watching how much money we spend. To answer your question, I don't know. There's sometimes yes and sometimes no. It costs us more money. Right. We don't know. What, we don't know in a given year. We right. much really don't. Okay. Yeah. No. I. I don't have per se anything against it. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding. Sure. I mean, like you said, and I think you were agreeing. That, yeah. I think maybe when you were first brought on as city manager, that would have been the ultimate time. I just. I just, and you mentioned it, and you've already said it. I want to make sure it's clear that, I mean, you guys have done a phenomenal job. So this isn't like any type of uh, <coughs> reaction to some other type of action. Sure, so, I understand. But thank you for the yes. answer. Acting Mayor. Uh, so uh, just one last thing to clarify is most cities have these limits. Like some of them are, the, the ones that 50,000 you're talking, Columbus, Toledo, you know, when they're going out and buying, you know, uh, bulk purchases of things. Uh, most cities that are like Huber Heights only has it at twenty thousand. Union has it at twenty thousand. Uh, West Milton has it on like seven thousand. So like the average I could find was right in the twenty thousand range. I figured that'd be a good settle. And like I talked with Mr. Bridge, and so yeah, that was all I had to say. Anybody else? Um, and thank you. Just for your day to day, you said looking back on it, you only think of th three times where this might affect where we could actually bring up more legislation because my, my only fear about this is <clears throat> you know you have no history of overspending and the first thing that came to my mind was you did come to us when you wanted to buy a laptop which haven't bought it yet so i'm trying to think you know is this necessary for what we have in place right now and what is the potential for actually actually costing us money you know, moving it forward you know is it one of those things that you know we go ahead and do to protect ourselves in the future because i don't feel it's really a risk right now so for you personally, Mr. Bridge, I mean, I, and Mikey, I know you just kind of asked that question, but uh, how, is there anything coming up that we have this year where um, we would have to be, uh, we would bring in more legislation? Well, we already ordered the police cruiser, mm -hmm. so that's already been ordered, and that was well before this was even introduced. Um, big projects coming up. Capital purchases off the top of my head. We've got the bar screen for water and wastewater. But that would have to be that would have been no matter what. Yeah, no matter it's what, that would have been legislation. So um, 
what else in capital do we have coming up? Because that's pretty much where it's going to govern our big purchases. Water has already been addressed because yeah, that's already done. That's um, doing, we just our, it used to be our sludge hauling used to be in that twenty-five thousand dollar range, which was always you know like a dollar more than what we were allowed to spend. But we've gotten that down to like twelve, thirteen thousand, so we're good there. That was just one an annual one that we would get and have to run an emergency. And we understand council doesn't we we all don't like run emergencies, and that would kind of put that in that place sometimes. Or very rare. Our VIP software, yeah, yeah. So the VIP software we're looking to get would have to be um, through legislation, uh, but that would be a single read. Again, city managers authorized to sign any and all agreements from this point out. And Lynette would still, <coughs> oh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, sorry, <laughs> not used to that yet. Uh, so just to be clarified, like Lent would already have to review that to make sure it was legal in the house. She would. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Our, our attorney reviews every single contract we have, or any kind of any kind. Of, I mean, I don't care if it's a. I'm signing a hundred dollar contract with you to provide the service. So when that reviews literally every single contract we have. Um, so yeah, there might be some extra charges for new legislation pieces, but. Um, I don't, I, with, I, I, I just don't know how much it's going to cost when I give it a year, year in, year out. Okay. okay. I, I, I just wanted to make sure we weren't going to like dig ourselves into a hole where we end up spending more money than what's necessary sure. if we're not really concerned about you guys overspending. Sure. The, uh, the only thing I'd like to say on this is Mr. Bridge and I, and I'm sure uh, Mr. Reynolds, we have this talk about this. And I had, uh, we had a concern that you expressed to me that you didn't want the public to think that you were overspending or whatever and why you were cutting back. And, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure if, um, my memory isn't what it used to be. But the, uh, I told you that. Uh, this has nothing to do with you. That every budget that he has had since 15, he has come in under budget on his spending. Uh, he, he doesn't buy things willy-nilly as they have in the past. And quite honestly, if we'd have had this, this uh, type of ordinance in place a few years ago, probably, I'm gonna go back probably 10 years ago, we probably have been in a lot better shape in 2015 than we was. And it was, in my opinion, because I wasn't involved in a lot of things then, it was overspending from the administration, namely the city manager at that time, and consequently other city managers. But this is in no way, I want to make it perfectly clear to the people here and to people that's going to be seeing this video, this is not, and I repeat, not a reflection on the city manager and or his administration. This is to safeguard this city in future administrations, future city managers, unless Mr. Bridge decides to stay here for the next 40 years and retire, and if we can get that in writing, we, we don't need this. But I'm sure he's not going to stay here the next four years. At some point, he'll retire or, <laughs> or move or something. So I just wanted to make it perfectly clear. This has no reflection on him and or this administration. This is to safeguard taxpayers' funds and to benefit this city in the future. Anybody else? Uh, any other members? Just one more thing, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Bridge, Mr. Kiko, I just want to make sure you don't think this is going to affect your day to day and put us in the hole where we are possibly having to spend more money than we necessarily need to. If it was going down to like fifteen hundred dollars, I would have a <laughs> totally different outlook on this. You know, twenty thousand is appropriate, and I will be the first to say that I think you proposed fifteen, and we met twenty. Yeah. I have moved up slowly in, year after year. <laughs> in our style of government we have, which you high school kids, there's a little lesson for you. In municipal government, you can have a strong mayor, former government, you can have a, a what they call a city manager, weak mayor, uh, weak mayor former government, thank you. 
Um, we have a what is called a strong city manager, whereas I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the city. Then you have council who is your policy legislative. We want to pass this law. That's what they do. <coughs> but when you have an amount that goes down to fifteen hundred dollars, I would essentially be coming to council with legislation pieces for the internet speed at the city building, the the copy release that we have at the city building. And no disrespect to council, but that's why we have the city manager in that place to make those kind of calls. So the $20,000 is very acceptable. If it was anything low, like very low, then yes, we would have so many more legislation pieces. And every one of these ordinances that you see here in front of you has my times involved in it, but our law, term, law director makes way more than I do and her time invested in this as well. So we want to watch how many of these that we have to put in, <coughs> given the cost that goes into even producing a single ordinance or a resolution. But with that $20,000 amount, I think it's enough for a lot of us to continue on that day-to-day -day operations, but yet keep council informed with those massive, big purchases. Council? Anything else? Mr. Cook? I believe and concur with about everything that's been said on this. But I think the main factor of this ordinance is the fact it increases the transparency to the voters. Again, nothing against the present administration. But if you've been around this town as long as Mr. Brosey and I have, you have seen overspending by administrations. And I think that with this ordinance in place, it will prevent that and possibly give us a much better budget and a budget surplus toward the end of each year. Council? Mrs. Martin. Mr. Cobb. Oh, no, I'm right. Yes. 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 Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Passes 7 0. And I'm relinquishing the gavel back to Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Ms. Sparner, if you would like to continue. All right. Other business. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1 30 p.m. until 2. The Crime Watch meeting will take place here at Smith Park Shelter House April 11th at 6.30 p.m. Executive session, none. Right. Council, any other business tonight? I'm here. Uh, do we want to discuss Parks and Rec? But our Parks and Rec all, here. all committees. Do you want to try to come up with a date or? Do you, Mr. Cook? Yes, I would like to schedule a work session. I recently, was apprised of some of our problems with some of the boards and commissions that we have on board. Did a lot of um, research and came up with a, I guess the word is board and commission handbook from one of our neighbors, namely the city of Hoover Heights. <clears throat> this is a very concise work it puts everything probably into play. I would like for that work session to go over this book. Possibly there are some changes that need to be made. Uh, number one, I believe the city manager and I have talked in the past about a, having a council member be attached as kind of a liaison for each of these committees and respond back to council. That needs to be entered into here, along with a few other minor changes. But that's basically my request for a work session. Is there a second on a work session? Second. And now a date. What day works? We're getting into busy season. I know, right? <clears throat> Does the 26th work for everyone? Nope. Next week? Nope. Okay. That's my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Early birthday. Um, do we want to try? 
Do we want to reach out to the committees and see? I think we should. I, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, for Parks and Rec, the majority of, or a lot of them are have children, young kids. Yeah. So we could reach out to them and maybe do like a mass email, see what works best for That's them. That's fine. Do that. That's fine. We can, you know, leave this thing go if you want until the following uh, council <coughs> meeting and then set it at that point. My, okay. My thinking is that um, we probably need to get this in place as soon as possible. Completely but agree. A month or two isn't going to kill us. Okay. So do you just want to rescind the motion then and wait until we get everyone back? Fine. All right, we're going to rescind the motion until we get in touch with Parks and Rec and other boards. Very good. And sound good? Good. Yeah. All right. Council, anything else? No. Executive session done tonight. And Mr. Sorry. Mr. Reynolds, I move we adjourn. Now, we need a second now for the rules of council change. Second. Second. All right. We are adjourned. Second. Mr. Chairman. We're going to go right in or what do you think is practical? Five minute break? Yeah, We're going to do a five minute break before we get into the.